Hello everyone. This is Professor McKay for your physical geography class. And as I said, I'm going to experiment with this camera that I purchased. We'll see how well it goes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So this is the PowerPoint for the first chapter. So I'm going to go through it really quickly because, you know, you could read all this text. I'm just going to flow through it, give us some main ideas, um, talk a little bit about the class in general. Like I said, this is an experiment, so we'll see how this goes. Hello. <coughs> all right. So, as you can read clearly, um, the book you're looking for is Essentials of Physical Geography, um, ninth edition. Uh, I used to use eighth edition, but the bookstore wants me to change over this semester. Uh, the only difference is, uh, well, the new one is quite a bit more expensive, to be honest. So, um, but they're basically really similar. And I'll use uh, slides and pictures from both editions, just to give you extra examples. So what is geography? All right. Well, the field of geography sees Earth as a system, looks at the big picture, looks at flows, looks at how things are connected to one another. Um, okay. And it's a spatial science. It's a holistic science. Uh, what does this mean? Well, spatial, of course, is space, right? It means that things happen in different areas. Um, holistic approach, again, that's big picture, looking at how the whole thing fits together. Um, but at the same time, uh, geography also breaks the world up into re regions uh, that have similar characteristics. You know, for example, um, you know, here in Minnesota we're getting a lot of snow, so if you wanted to, you could do a uh, regional study of just places uh, in the world that have snow, and we'll talk a lot more about this as we go. <coughs> uh, so these are some before and after pictures of logging in the uh, Amazon rainforest. And as you can see, um, there's different patterns happening here. Um, there's different ge geography to what's happening. Uh, if you're going to look at these slides and you're going to see some patterns, uh, one of the clearest things you would see is these lines. You'd say, well, what, what's, what's going on with these lines? Why are these patterns and lines? Well, the answer is roads. you got to have roads to haul off that lumber they're, cut, they're cutting down there. So there you go. That's why you have that pattern. So here's another spatial analysis you could do, uh, looking at places of the United States that are mostly heating, mostly cooling. Uh, the questions you could ask and be answered would be, you know, <coughs> when you're trying to uh, budget for what kind of um, utility costs you may have if you move in that region, or if you run a utility company, all right? These types of maps are useful. Uh, here's another spatial distribution. Uh, this is just uh, North America at night. And if you see patterns here, well, you can see cities, especially major ones, look like kind of stars, right? That's because they're a cluster of these lights. And if you're looking for other patterns, you'd also see lines, right? You see these lines connecting the cities. Again, major roadways. Uh, if you're going to see another pattern, what would that be? What do you think? All right, all of your answers are correct. No, I didn't hear any answers. But uh, another pattern would be a lack of lights, right? So you could really basically see where the major bodies of Wadi are very clear, very clearly. All right. Um, you know, these before and after pictures are really interesting. Uh, one of the really fascinating things about them, uh, before and after. So what happened here? Well, this is a tsunami that hit. And when you're looking at these, the before and after, you see that on one of the after photos, there are some areas that look just like they did before. Right? And so as a geographer, you're, you know, these are the type of questions you'd want to answer. Well, you know, is there something that, you know, some precaution that was made in that area to make it uh, weather the 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 uh, torrential storm better? Uh, no, it's just higher elevation. All right. Let me try to make these less than 10 minutes. I see I'm moving up on four, so let me try to cruise through these a little quickly. Um, so again, Earth looks at systems, look at the big picture, but again, you break that down for further analysis. So our book, we're basically going to break it down into atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere, and the biosphere. Uh, pretty much the first half of the class is going to be all about the atmosphere. We're going to be looking at weather, we're going to be looking at climates. Um, <coughs> then the second half of the class we'll be looking at lithosphere, we'll be talking about volcanoes, earthquakes, uh, hydrosphere, you know, oceans and rivers and biosphere. Um, and um, I uh, worked on a class called Biogeography over at the University of Minnesota a few years back. 
And the biogeography class was very, very highly populated. It had over 400 students each class. And um, that's basically the plants and animals of the world. Pretty interesting. Basically, turn on the TV to the Discovery Channel and you'll see something similar to that. And I read about scientific method. Uh, again, seeing big picture, right? Seeing these flows. Um, this here is a, a you know, life support system, a little cycle. What eats what? What gets eaten by what? Um, yeah, you could read about this. <coughs> so another important part of geography is systems theory. Um, basically looking at what comes into a system, what goes out of a system, when is a system closed, when is a system open. In a nutshell, you can have uh, both matter and energy coming into your system and an output of matter and energy. So if you look at the Earth, um, well, basically, the Earth, although we're getting plenty of energy in, when you're looking at systems, you're talking about matter. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, the, the Earth system, although, yeah, you know, we get hit by meteorites and stuff every now and then, we're basically a closed system because we're getting in plenty of energy uh, and even reflecting back energy, uh, but not much matter coming back and forth. Here's another environmental system. You could look at uh, not only the cycle, but... Uh, you know, is this an open system or closed system? Well, this is a pretty open system. I mean, that, that rainwater is going to go all around the world, right? Well, again, looking at a system, it's important to look at not only the ins and outs, but what kinds of flows are there in and out of the system? Well, you read more, more about this. <clears throat> all right. Hey, that was quicker than I thought. All right. Um, so let's see if I have any other announcements for you. So for those of you who have read the syllabus and maybe still wondering, so what do, what do I have to do for assignments? Well, you have uh, covering about two chapters a week, and so that's a quiz on each chapter. They're short quizzes. And then um, you do a weekly discussion post and two comments and other students' posts. Uh, so I'll read more about that on the content section. All right, thanks.